So hi everyone, this is Jiggy, a portrait and wedding photographer from the Philippines and welcome to the channel. So today's video, I will be demonstrating my go-to lighting setup here in my small home studio. For you guys who are not familiar with the channel, this is a relatively small shooting area of about 2 meters wide and 3.5 to 4 meters deep. And today is also a very special day because aside from my go-to lighting setup, I will be using one of my favorite lights, the Nanlite FS200B. Actually, I have the Nanlite FS150B, the FS300B, and at the same time, I also had the older versions, which was just daylight. But these things are amazing because if you guys, again, have been watching my videos, you know that I do love my continuous lights now because of the ability to change the color temperature. And finally, we have it in the FS series, the 300, the 150, the 60, and the 200. Now, what makes the FS series so special when it comes to portrait photographers or studio photographers like myself? It's basically this. Look at how the cob lights look like. They're actually very big. And by having it very big, you are creating straight out of the box, softer light. So this particular light would not give you hard edge shadows, even if you try to do it. This particular light is really built for studio work. And it is inexpensive. That's the most beautiful thing about the FS line because you cannot power it using a power pack or basically um, batteries, V-mount batteries. It's only powered via this one, an AC outlet. But one thing that I love about this particular light and the AC outlet is that the power is really built in. So all you have is a cord like this. Unlike those other LED lights that still have a really huge power brick, this one's already built in. So basically enough of the light. I'll talk about the light more when we're using it, but honestly, my go-to light with my go-to lighting setup is actually perfect. And the modifier that I will be using is this one, the Nanlite Parabolic 120CM um, softbox. Now, you see the size of the softbox. This is pretty big, right? So normally, you try to put your softbox like this. You put it like this, and it's heavy. It's actually um, very dangerous for you to do that. So what I would always suggest, or when the light is like this, I would always suggest to have the light facing upwards use the weight of the modifier to set it in place like so, okay? So it's very easy even with just one hand to do that, okay? Now this stand light of course comes with a full Bowens mount and it can handle a light source this big. And I will put it here because my go-to lighting setup is short side lighting and what is short side lighting it is basically lighting the side of the face that is away from the camera and i will demonstrate that further when i call in my wife coco to help me well do this shoot but let's talk about you guys might be curious about this backdrop this is a five foot five foot by seven foot backdrop from kate backdrop it's a hand painted one it's beautiful i really do love this for portrait work okay so I guess with all of these things out of the way, let's talk about my camera, but I think I'd like to call in my wife Coco now to help me demonstrate short side lighting. Come on in, babe. Hi, babe. Hi, babe. All right, thank you very much again for doing this. Now, short side lighting is basically Coco facing here, right? This is her angle. This is the angle she likes. And this side is the one that's facing the camera. Short side lighting, basically means that I will have my light coming from this general direction. Okay, let's just bring it up. Now, we are using continuous light. So definitely we have video lights here. And what do we do with it? Do we keep it? Do we take it out? Because this is continuous light also, or do we mix it? And that's what we're going to be doing now. Okay, so the camera that I'm using now is my Sony A7R Mark IV. And the lens is a 50 millimeter 1.2 GM. The reason why I'm using a 50 millimeter is because I want to shoot a half body portrait of Coco. Now, and of course it's 1.2, so I can blur out the background, it's just fantastic. So these video lights, you could see that right now, it is actually still being seen. Now, normally I would say that, okay, let's just remove the video lights. 
and have the light coming from here, which is actually perfect because it gives you a high contrast image, which I might show you guys later. However, I also want to emphasize on the fact that if you have light that's in your studio, or even when you're shooting outdoor, because this one actually mimics the light coming from a window light, and that's why I love it. Because whenever you are facing a window, you're actually doing short side lighting. Let's say this is your window, right babe? And you're facing this way. When you're facing this way, your camera is normally here and I am lighting from the short side. That's what I always do with window light. However, even if I'm shooting window light, it's not just one light source coming from here. It's really a big light source. So you've got light going all over the place. So that's why I want my video light here also, just to soften up the shadows. But I will show you later with my video light turned off and how it looks like. All right. So right now, my settings are 1 over 1000 f1.2 ISO 100. And let's turn on the video light now. Oh, sorry, the Nanlite FS200B. Now, the biggest problem is it's going to be blinding, right? It's blinding. It's so strong, right? So I just tried as much as possible to fix the post of Coco so that she doesn't get blinded by the light. Notice immediately, the moment that I turned on the light, it gave shape, form, texture, and depth. And that is the beautiful thing about short side lighting. By lighting the short side here, you are creating shadows on this side, creating that shape, that form, the texture. And by the way, babe, you look fantastic. So this light here, basically just opens up the shadows and reduces the contrast because having the light this close will create a lot of contrast. So having ambient light or balancing ambient light, so if you have your existing ambient light, what you do is you actually just set your exposure like what I did here. Again, let me turn it off. You set your exposure now just for that hint of ambient light just to open up the shadows which you know you will create in this side of the face. So the moment that I turn on my light, we are still getting shadows on that side. However, it's not high contrast. And by the way, my white balance is set at 5600 Kelvin and I set this nan light at 5600 Kelvin. Fantastic. That's 200 Bs and they're so inexpensive, babe. It's really perfect for a studio photographer that's just starting out who wants the best possible light they can get at a budget. And I really be believe this FS series is really perfect for photographers, studio photographers, actually. All right, fantastic. Look at that. Beautiful. I love it. Love it. Actually, let me change my focusing point. I'll just have it on wide or zone or wide. And you know, these Sony cameras will just track your eye there. So it's not distracting. I love it. How about looking at me straight? Beautiful. You look amazing. Face here, but not towards the light too much. There we go. So doesn't it look like natural window light? And that's why I like short side lighting. And let me demonstrate now, if I turn off this light, how it would look. Automatically, you get a more high contrast image nice too. However, there are times that you don't want too much contrast. That's why you want to bring in a bit of ambient light. So let me turn it on again. Actually, right now, it's just a personal preference. But the most important thing, even if I have my light here, we are still getting the contrast. We are still getting lights and shadows, highlights, through tone and shadows. And let's shoot some more. Beautiful. Beautiful. I love it. How's the light, babe? Is it bothering you? No. No, not at all? Perfect. Okay. Cool. Beautiful face here. There. Look at that. Honestly, it's just really beautiful window light. And that's short side lighting. Once again, short side lighting is lighting the side of the face that is away from the camera. So. This is the side of the face that's near to the camera. The light is coming from here and it is creating that texture or sorry, those shadows here that will create shape and form. However, the shadows here, I am actually opening up 
by another light source, which could easily be your existing ambient light. So I want to shoot some more. It's just, you look fantastic, babe. I like this. Beautiful. Beautiful. And the nice thing about using continuous light, what you see is what you get. I can even change my exposure, make it a tad bit brighter there, 1 over 800. Perfect. Perfect. Love it. You like your pictures? You can see it, right? You can move forward a bit. There we go. Move here. So you notice, I just made her move, for, move forward, take a step forward. The light already changed. Instead of having the light coming from that area too much on this side, by moving her forward, we created a bit more contrast. The highlights became more pronounced. There we go, babe. There. Move forward. And there, look, more contrast now than look here. Good. Even with this one here, we created a bit more contrast. Because the light is no longer hitting the side of the face, even just a little. So move back again, babe. Let's show them the difference. Move back. Face there. When she faces there and she moves back, look at how the shadows on her cheeks, on her left cheek, right there, see they're almost gone, but maybe it's just two steps forward. One more. Automatically you get a bit more contrast. That's how to do it if you're just using normal window lighting, but that's why this is my go-to lighting setup, short side lighting. I always light the short side. Thank you very much, babe. So if you guys have any questions with regards to this video, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And if you did enjoy this video, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click that notification bell. Now, if you want to see more of my images, you could always find me on Instagram. It's at Jiggy Alejandrino. Okay, till the next video.